I knew that God was set for something. Firstly, I knew that I wasn't just coming to a platform. I was coming to stand upon an altar. Amen. In case we don't know what God has given to us in this house. You see, God has given us one of his choice servants. If you are in this city and you are in Alpha Life Tabernacle, God has shown you mercy. There are different ways God shows a man mercy. One of the ways is by planting you in a correct place. And there are labors that have been going on upon this altar in this house. And I knew God wanted to set an alarm, sound an alarm. If you are here, it's not a coincidence. It's because God has chosen you for something special. I've been laboring in this land for close to 20 years. I'll share some of my experiences with you tonight. And one of the things I have desired from the depth of my heart is to always put my ears close to the mouth of God. Not just to speak, but to say what God is saying. A lady came to my house, someone came to my house recently, and the person already, they diagnosed the person's blood pressure was rising. I was inside the room and she saw my wife and by the time she was done, my wife insisted I come out. I told her I was not in the mood to pray for anybody. I just wanted to. So the first night I came to the sitting room, and when I saw her, I didn't know that she had BP. I didn't know what they discussed with my wife. But as soon as I set my eyes on her, the Lord told me to tell her not to worry, stop worrying. And I kept saying that word. I kept saying that word. That was when she now opened up that things had been going on and the blood pressure had been rising. That was all I did. I can't even remember praying for her. About two days ago, she sent a message to my wife. I saw it on the WhatsApp. And she said, we thank God. He said, the blood pressure, everything has gone back to normal, just as Papa said it. The greatest honor a man can have is to be God's mouthpiece. To bring forth his counsel time God is sounding an alarm not only in Alpha Life Tabernacle but also in the city of Kano that it is time for revival it is time for an awakening I have labored in different dispensations and different times, in different places. When I see a revival, I know it. The Bible says in Acts chapter 7, verse 19, Silamuntu halakavetela, skivovu untelabara. Acts chapter 7, verse 19. Please run with me. Acts chapter 7, from verse 19, says, It says, This man, was treacherous with our people and oppressed our forefathers making them expose their babies so that they might not leave at this time 
Moses was born and was well pleasing to God and he was brought up in his father's house for three months the Bible can I step down a little will that be okay the Bible tells us the story of the children of Israel in the time when Joseph was alive in his time he brought them into Egypt and because of his presence they had so much influence in the land then he died are you following me he died and a king that knew not Joseph came and scripture says that this king tormented the, the people of Israel he slew their babies he put them to hard labor it was during that time of slavery that Moses was born you see we all we are born at different times Moses was not born in the time of freedom he was born when his people were in slavery and he would have thought that being a slave was normal but it wasn't normal but he was born in a bad time I want to announce to it every young person under the sound of my voice that most of us here we are born we came into christianity when things had changed are you with me we we were born in such a time as when moses was born in a time of darkness in the past 20 years i have labored with different ministers onto my local church labored at diverse times and i have seen that there are times and there are times moses was born in the time of slavery most of us here we came into christianity when the fire are you with me had gone out so most of what you see today and we call church is abnormal are we together most of what we see and we enjoy one of those times a pastor was posted to my local church and when he came he came with all manner of annoyance and he led a prayer for about 15 minutes in church and after the prayer session he told us he said she we want revival he said this is revival where i stood i knew that this man does not know what revival is not long after that a lot of issues came out and then things just went very bad most of us came into church when things had changed when the fire in the altar has gone low we were in fc this morning and i was privileged to be with uh the patron of the entire campus fellowship and he was sharing a few experiences they had those days with me but listen there is a reason why you were born at such a time as this somebody's not hearing me the bible says moses was born at such a time as this there's a reason why you were born in the time of darkness if i would have my way i would say moses should not be born at that time god i i shouldn't come at such a time but listen one of the reasons why god sends men in the time of crisis is because he had put in them the capacity is somebody hearing what i'm saying to turn the darkness to light and turn that night into what into day if you are with me say amen in case you find yourself in your family and you are saying why was i born when things became bad is because god 
knows that inside of you is embedded the grace to turn that bad situation around and turn it into good. My dad labored for many years. I'll show you a scripture. Let us go to our anchor scripture for tonight in Judges. My dad labored as a very rich man, served. But by the time I came, Bactus had surrounded him so much that he had lost most of his possessions. So I came in where things were shaky already. I saw hardship. Are you with me? Sometimes my mom will pack our clothes, wash them, take it to cover one day and sell them for us to be able to have, have a meal. And I would have said, oh God, why was I not born in so, in so and so family? The reason is because God has placed on my inside the genes of a deliverer. So if we are born in a time where darkness is all over the place, where battles is all over the place, when it looks as though Satan is in charge, it's because God has placed on our inside all it takes to turn things around and make the kingdoms of this world the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Let me tell your neighbor, there's a reason why you were born at such a time as this. Preach to somebody by your side. Tell the person there's a reason you were sent for such a time as this. You were sent to Kano. For such a time as this, you were sent to Alpha Life Tabernacle. For such a time as this, you were born for such a time as this. Judges chapter 6. Lamo koko salabarata. Lamo koski balabahande. I was streaming a video recently. The man of God held a meeting in the city of New York. And by the time he was leading prayers, after 30 seconds, the congregation could not pray again. He had to pause and say, have you guys finished praying? He tried. He tried another one. It didn't work. The world is waiting for us. There is an answer we carry. Let me lay the foundation with the story of... Let, let me show you that we, that we are all born in different times. Judges chapter 6. Because of my time, let's speak it from verse 11. It said, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terrible tree which was in Ophrah, which belonged unto Joash the Abbey's right, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. What was Gideon's response? Let's read it once to go. 13. Gideon said, Uh-huh. Don't worry, I will wait for you. Judges chapter 6, verse 13. Amen. So if you don't have a Bible, tell your neighbor, help me. I win verse 13. <laughs> verse 13. Now let's read it together. I will still wait for you. So you, so you must read it. Verse 13, one to go, Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And which our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord? You see, Gideon was, came at a time 
when the glory had departed. So all he met was stories. And God proposed in his heart that Gideon is going to be the one he will use to champion those days again. Those days of testimonies. I don't care the stories you have heard, but I know there is somebody under the sound of my voice whom God is going to use to bring back those days. Whom God is going to use to bring back those testimonies. You believe it, shout a loud amen. I read books of men like Wesley Dwell and I saw what God did through men like Duncan Campbell, men like John Wesley. I read of how they entered the city and the city was slain and in my passion I began to pray. I fasted for seven days. The Lord came after seven days and said add another one. He said from 7, he said do 14. So I finished 7, I entered 14. I entered 14 when I was done, he said 21. I entered 21, he moved, he said 28. I moved to 28, he said 35. It was at 35, I stopped, I said Kimi. Kimi. But it was during those days, I entered the class as a teacher. And the hand of God hit the building and all the children began to weep. This thing happened in Holy Trinity, uh, in the Redeemer School, Airport Road. Those days, one of my students in class was Shalom. Who knows Shalom in this city? Shalom, the music. If you see tomorrow when she sees me she finds it difficult to call me pastor she calls me uncle she was in the it was in my class the power of god hit them six about 16 of them they fell on the floor they were weeping the section ahead came into the class he saw all the children on the floor weeping he asked his uncle what is happening i said me too before you know he turned back, he ran out of the class. Every one of them gave their life to Jesus. I don't care what you have read in the books. It is possible for it to come back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whatsoever you have watched is possible. That promise of God is possible. And it's possible in Alpha Life Tabernacle. Gideon said, where are all the miracles? Where are all the testimonies that we have seen, that we have heard? We only read them in the books. We are not seeing them. And the angel began to educate him. At a point, he looked at his life and said, no, my family is the weakest in Manasseh. I am the smallest in my family. I am the least. The angel said, whether the weakest or the smallest, God is able to turn a little one into a great nation. A small one into a mighty one. And those days are here. 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 You believe it? I want you to rise on your feet and say with me, they are here. Walk around, say they are here. Walk around, say they are here. Talk to somebody, say they are here. Move to somebody and say they are here. Tell them they are here. They are here. Move around, say they are here. Those days are here. Those days are here. Those days are here. I came as a messenger of God. I came as one who have heard from God. I came as one God has taken into the future of this city. That the days are here. When the young men and women will arise, men and women that will burn, little ones that will burn and overthrow greatness, those days are here.
say with me they are here hamana kubasa skomba la pela hadiku mantela rebanta la ka they are here panontela the songwriter said these are not the days of elijah these are not the days of moses these are not the days of samuel these are my days and your days and it will come not by power not by might but by the spirit of god you might be here under the sound of my voice you are weak you are weary your prayer life is not strong you don't see visions but after this meeting there will be an impartation the hand of god is going to rest upon you there's going to be a shift you shall be turned into another man turned into another woman in the name of jesus it doesn't matter if you have met my jesus you will know that he delights in taking the weakest and making them the strongest no wonder paul said when i am weak then i am strong the person you see standing before you i struggled for many years i wept i cried i went from meeting to meeting place to place until i almost entered the kanka i went home with their flyer and my dad saw a kanka flyer I said, what is a canker doing in my house? I said, it's a program. He said, no, it's not a church, it's a cult. I wept. I said, Lord, is this possible? I will never forget. 2004, the hand of God came upon me. When the minister saw me, and she laid us and said, God, this is your servant. I didn't look like it. I don't understand it. When I entered the house and she saw me, she sat on the chair and said, Servant of God, man of God, my eyes were filled with tears. Where is the man of God? But listen to me. When the Holy Ghost took my hand, line upon line, precept upon precept, he kept moving me. I didn't know what was happening until people around were the ones calling me man of God a generation has found the path of light and the days are here lift up your right hand once again say the days are here the days are here the days are here please be seated for a while take me to the flyer please I want to burn for you, Jesus. Lead me to the burning bush. I want to hear your voice. I'm your sacrifice. I'm your sacrifice. Take me to the fire, please. Lead me to the burning bush. I'm your sacrifice. I'm your sacrifice. And let my incense rise to you, O oh God. Let my incense rise to you. Let me teach you a little. You see, it was in this same town, number 10, Abarud. The woman that raised us up, there was this other young man that was also working with us, then Peter. They brought a small girl to her. And they said somebody cursed that girl that she would never walk. And the girl was, I think, about three years old. She, she could not walk. When my mentor had, she began to cry. And while they were praying inside the house, in the sitting room, my friend Peter took the child inside the room. The people in Palo were so gross and gross with praying, binding every evil power, returned to sender. While they were binding and casting, Peter took the legs of the child that has not walked before, placed it on the ground inside the room. The child stood on the floor. 
took the hands of the child the child began to walk for the first time the people in the parlor were still scabbing when the people in the room busted out with shouts they opened their eyes they didn't see the child again behold the child was coming out from the room with her own legs the days are here And God is going to use young people. Let me teach you something about young people in the next few minutes and we begin to tidy up. Let me teach you something about young people. In 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11 to verse 15, the scripture says that a man slayed Saul. An Amalekite, when he saw Saul, he slew him and he went to David. 2 Samuel chapter 1. Lamo koko sianda, lame sasaba la baba, hila kumbra baba bayata. The days are here. The days are here. Mante leko si bahande. Second Samuel chapter one, verse eleven. Just follow me. Follow me. He said. Then David took out of his clothes and told them. Verse twelve. He mourned, wept, and fasted until evening. Then listen to me verse 13 then david said to the young man who who told him where are you from and he answered i'm the son of an alien an amlekite so david said to him how was it that you were not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy the lord's anointed can we read verse 15 together i want to show you something from that scripture verse 15 want to go then david called what one of the young men and said go near and execute him and he struck him and he died you see david was a mighty man of war but something terrible happened in the land the anointed was slain and he wanted to punish the man that killed the anointed david did not use his hand to kill the man the scripture says he called one of the young men do i have young men in the house he in in he looked for a young man to execute vengeance no wonder the scripture says out of the mouth of babes and sucklings as thou ordained strength that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger call the young man and say there's something i need to do but my hands it should not be said that my hand did this type of thing the young man took a dagger and slew the amlekite the same thing in Acts chapter 5. When Ananias and Sapphira came and he told the lie, what did Peter say to him, people of God? He said, the feet of the young men that carried your husband, they are still in the house. Ananias fell down, died. The young men, who carried him out? Talk to me. The young men. When Sapphira died, who took her out? There are many dead things in the church. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? God is waiting for the young men to evacuate them. God is counting on you to carry them out. God is counting upon me as a young man to carry them out. Said the feet of the young men. I have noticed as you serve God. That the oil upon your life begins to take different forms at different stages. As you grow older, there are things you will not be able to do again. Am I communicating? Not because the unction is not there, but the texture of the unction is changing. Are you with me? The texture of the unction is changing. It will be an aberration today to see Bishop Oyede for doing crusade. Am I communicating? But hope you know he, he once did crusades. Because as dispensation changes, the, the unction, the texture changes based on the assignment. Right now he's raising the leaders of the next generation. He can't be saying come out. Am I making sense? Therefore, God must raise another set of young people who are energetic and who will be able to deal with such situations at that level. The young men carried the dead people out of the church. There are things that need to be carried out.
out of Alpha Life Tabernacle. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is counting upon you. Oh Lord, help me. Hallelujah. I grew up, some, some of you are lucky. You don't know what God has done for you. I grew up in a church that when you are when you are revived and you come into church, they will kill your fire inside the church. Sometimes when God gives you a good pastor, you don't know why. I came to church one day and, and the pastor was posted to our church. His first message while he was preaching, he came to the altar with an umbrella that looked like a walking stick. And he stood at the altar and said, Brethren, the title of my message is You Are My Walking Stick. When, when I see young people today say, My church is not feeding me, hey, my, my, I can't. Jesus, come, I can take you days back. You are my what? And he said, what happens if I fall? What will happen to this walking stick? He said, we said it will fall. He said, if I fall, you fall. As if that was not enough. The next message. He came to preach again. The flog of God. The flog. The flog of God. Those were the types of messages we were listening to. It was in such a place I grew up. So we had to fend for ourselves lest we die. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We had to search for God. It was in a youth meeting like this the power of God began to burn and the hand of God came upon I made a decision that day and we began to journey four sisters four sisters i was the only brother in their midst they began to burn they began to pray each time we meet you see this one saying i'm on 40 days you see that one say i'm on 21 days this one said i pray three three hours every day it was like that we began to journey my first 40 days i did it in church and for church crying and say oh god we want to see your power and your glory in this place first 40 days the first two days dry i did i did it inside church i was scared of darkness are you with me for those of you who are like me see god uses ordinary people i was scared of darkness so I'll come to church from morning till evening. Once it's 6 o'clock, 6.30, I'll pack my things. I'll go home and sleep. In the morning, 6 a.m., 7, I'll be back again. That's how I did my first two, two, two days drive. Don't ask me whether I prayed. Are you with me? But I did fasting. You know those type of fasting? You just lie down from morning till evening. Then in the evening, you pack your Bible and you go home. The, the name of our youth fellowship there was Trinitarian Youth Fellowship. I won't tell you the name of the church. That was how we began. Holding on to God. But there's something I have learned. God can bring revival in a city if he finds one person. He can bring revival in a place if he finds one person. All he needs is available vessel. We kept pushing. Until one day, pastor gave mic to one of the sisters and said, lead worship for 15 minutes. She ended up leading worship for 45 minutes. Church scattered. Even pastor could not collect microphone. 45 minutes. That's how the fire began, began to burn. That in a normal service, we are doing service, prophecy will break out. Miracles, healings, deliverances. 
That was when God healed me of asthma. What are you saying? Revival. In the times of revival, there is healing. Am I communicating? The reason why we bring the sick to church, bring the sick to church again and again, and they keep coming and going, is when there is revival, healing will be taking place like water. And not from the hands of guest speaker. It was one of those sisters in the choir that was ministering in a midweek service that called us out and the hand of God came upon me and asthma disappeared. A sister in the choir. When I'm saying this, I know what I'm talking about. And God wants to raise somebody in this house. God has sent me here with a clarion call. My God, God is breaking you out of every dungeon, breaking you out of every limitation in the name of Jesus. Let's close so we will pray. Amen. We need to pray. I came to sound an alarm. That church cannot remain like this. Alpha Life Tabernacle cannot remain like this. How can you have such a pastor that is loaded, that is anointed? No. 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 I and the law and the sons whom God has given to me, we are for what? Signs and wonders. It's time to burn. I started coming to church early. Before service, I will come. I will clean the chairs. Four o'clock, I'm in church. Service is six o'clock. I'm not taking opening prayer. I'm not taking praises. I'm not doing anything. The only time I tried to play drums, the, the singer sang for long. And if you're a drummer here, if your leg is not strong, after a while, you will be playing nonsense because your muscles are tired. I was playing nonsense. She looked at me. She didn't pity me. From the altar, she just looked at me like this. I started looking for something that was not lost there. 